in there already. So from there, what I could do is I could essentially go to this node. There we go. So what I've written up a sample script to take up any archive, any distribution, and then fingerprint it. So if I go jbl cap, at least an older version because it has a fair few wonderful jars in it. So if I run that, it literally goes through all files within this particular archive, extracts all the jars, metadata, and then comes back, um, updates the database as well, and then comes back with all the matches that you have and where it's located in the particular archive as well. So this is pretty handy for uh, system admins, uh, whoever who wants to look at what deployed apps they have and figure out what vulnerabilities they're vulnerable to. Beyond that, um, not sure. I mean, I was planning to show a demo of the, uh, net, I mean, the live production system, but um, I think the VPN would be timely to put together, but that's fine. So essentially, all we have is a Postgres database that allows you to uh, scan or figure out what versions are affected and what fixes need to be applied. So that's what we do with it. Um, beyond that, I think that's about it. But before I conclude, I mean, what we plan to do with this particular thing is we, we want to get more fine-grained matching. So essentially, what we want to do is we need to do uh, fingerprinting at a lower level. We need to account for compiler differences, optimizations, and stuff like that, which is a really hard problem in itself. So we, we have not looked at that yet, and we will be focusing on trying to get that done. So next one after that would be we need to get uh, developers involved as well. We need to get people to contribute to the database so that they can use it much better. And it's, it's free to use, and there is no, it's fully open source, so anyone can play with it, tinker with it, and give us feedback. So that's about it. Um, any questions or thoughts? How applicable is that? Yes, okay. Okay. Um, it is on. I think it is. Yeah, I can hear myself in this wonderful way that I usually can't. Um, so first question here is, how specific is this to Java? And could uh, you it's, it's, it's not very specific, to be honest. I mean, you can develop, you can use the, I think Steve had this idea of using the for gems as well as Python eggs. So we are, we are working on that at the moment, but mainly because we are contributing these hashes for JAWS, mainly just because that's what we are working on at the moment. And it's easy to extend. So in V2, we might have a facility for you to upload an egg file or a JAWS file, and we'll do the hashing internally. And uh, we'll provide that on the database, and anyone can pull from it or do any random scans on their systems to identify vulnerabilities. So. Uh, and can you tell me more about the relationship of the hash um, what is oh, the, yeah. the why is why is the hash important? All is right, so in this way, I, I should have cleared that up. But um, the hash is really important because, especially because of the fact that the manifest file is never really up to date properly. So there is a, always a difference between the versions and. People forget, Pe developers always forget to update these versions. So when you pull this information from manifest files, which usually is the canonical source for this information, you get a wrong version. You get uh, 2.5.6 without the sec03, but that vulnerability would be specifically to sec02 maybe. So the hashing, it provides a way of getting 100% true positive answers, true positive results. So what we get otherwise is a false, false positives or false negatives. It's a hell hole when you go into that. So essentially, that, that's essentially why we are going for a fingerprinting approach. That's why we are going for a SHA-512. And SHA-512 specifically is because to avoid collisions, we found that um, because we are hashing files as small files as well, and Maven uses SHA-1 on their repository to compare them, what happens is when, when we hashed a few classes and compared to that the, on the Maven repository, we found a lot of collisions. So it's, it's hard to maintain file types just looking at the name as well. So that's one of the other reasons why we went for SHA-512 in this regard. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so for the folks running WebSphere with IBM, mm -hmm. the own version of the GRE, yeah. does this actually produce the same hashes that you would on the it, it, it can produce the hashes that are relevant to you. 
And the thing that you have to note now is that uh, the hashes that we have uploaded, uploaded on the Maven repository are for the JAWS of the modules that we have built internally in our systems. So the main reason is we don't have enough resources to go out there and find all the different builds and hash them. So once people start contributing to this um, database, what you will get back in return is a larger set of data, data that is applicable to IBM even. So the people might fingerprint the IBM version, upload that to us, so we hash it, and then put it into the database amongst the same CVE. So that means that even if you're using a web seer or whatever is it, you can still use it. So the tools are totally independent of uh, you know, JBoss or Red Hat or whatever. So yeah, so does that answer your question? You, you, you can do that or expect somebody else to do it if you're using the same runtime build. Or say, the thing about the upstream versions is that uh, once it's built, it's always in Maven, and that you can use whenever you want. So yeah, this, I hope that answered it, kind of. So anyone else? No? All right. So, that's it. Thanks for having me. Cheers, guys.